Welcome to the organic chemistry section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 51 to 55. So first I'll show you guys a question so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 51, 52, 53, 54, and 55. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 51, we're asked which of the following molecules does not contain a triple bond. So it does not have a triple bond. For this, we need to actually know these names of organic structures and know what their actual, the, the structure looks like. So names of, of organic compounds and know what the structure looks like. Benzene, option A looks like this. So there are six carbons in a ring, and then we have some alternating double bonds but you'll notice we have no triple bonds, and so A is correct here. Benzene, option A, does not contain a triple bond. Carbon monoxide, that's carbon with a triple bond to oxygen, so positive charge here, negative charge here. So carbon monoxide, there's a triple bond, and so that is a compound with a triple bond. Option C, nitrogen gas, also has a triple, bo triple bond between the two nitrogens. So we can rule that option out. And finally, option D, ethyne, that's just two carbons connected. And then both of them they have one hydrogen and then a triple bond between the two carbons. So options B, C, and D have a triple bond, but A does not. In question 52, it says this compound and the structural, the, the structural formula is given. will have which of the following intermolecular forces? So this compound, which intermolecular forces will it have if I have a solution of this compound? So the molecules are going to interact with each other which, with which interactions? Well, we see that there is a, a carbon chloride bond over here, also a carbon oxygen bond over here. So when you have a bond between two elements in which there is a significant change in or significant difference in electronegativities, that means that we are going to have a dipole exist in that bond. So this molecule does have dipole-dipole interactions. So that is going to be one intermolecular force between different molecules in the solution of that compound. So yes, dipole-dipole di interactions exist. Over here at the top, we have an OH group, so a hydroxide group. When we have hydrogen bonded to either oxygen, nitrogen, or fluoride, we say that we have hydrogen bonding occurring as well. So that is also an interaction that's happening. And then London dispersion forces or Van der Waals forces, they occur between every single molecule. And then it also occurs when we have a lot of, like a lot of hydrophobic things like carbons and hydrogens, a long chain of those. And we do seem to have that going on as well in the molecule. But Van der Waals forces for any molecule, you can check it off that yes, that force does exist. So therefore all three of these exist. And so D is our correct answer for this question. In question 53, we're asked into which solvent would the following compound most easily dissolve? So we see we have some hydrophobic carbon part over here, but the main part that matters is this part on the left, which you can see is hydrophilic and also protic, meaning that those oxygens at the bottom, they can gain and lose protons. When they lose protons, then they're charged and that actually would make them very good for dissolving in water. So option A is correct. So even though we do have some kind of hydrophobic part to this molecule, the effect of the hydrophilic part is much more pronounced, especially the fact that we have some negative charges. So we have a charged species. So that is going to make water the best option. And the other three options are better for if we have more so organic compounds that are, they might have some polarity to them, but they should be largely organic compounds. So the left part of the molecule would be fine in some of these other uh, organic solvents, but definitely not the right part. That would not dissolve well in an organic solvent. So we can rule out the other organic solvents. So they dissolve polar organic compounds and they're, they have different extents of polarity. So acetone would be the most polar, but in this case, because of the, the charged species and yeah, because of the charged species and the hydrophilic, hydrophilic nature of a majority of this molecule, it's going to dissolve in 
and aqueous solvent, so water is the correct answer. In question 54, it says the solubility in water of the compound above increases dramatically when which of the following occurs. So we're talking about the solubility of this compound. We're talking about it specifically in water, and it should increase when a certain modification occurs. So option A is saying if the methyl group is replaced with an ethyl group, so that would look like instead of just one carbon, we have two carbons coming off over here. That's incorrect. What that would accomplish is to make the compound more hydrophobic, and that would decrease its solubility in water, so that is incorrect. Option B is saying if the amine is methylated, same as with option A, that would make, so adding a CH3 group like right here would make the nitrogen, it would make the overall compound more hydrophobic and therefore less dissolvable in water. And the main part of this molecule that helps it dissolve in water is the nitrogen, which is able to have hydrogen bonding occur. So that's the main part that's making it dissolve in water. So you don't want to get rid of that. Option C is saying if the CCH3 group is replaced with C double bond O to make an amide. So if over here, if the CCH3 group is replaced with, so like if over here we had an amide like that, to a certain extent, this could increase the solubility in water because we're adding a bit more polarity. We are also adding another hydrogen bond acceptor. And so this could increase the solubility in water. However, the solubility of an amide versus this initial amine in water isn't really significantly different. Looking at option D, it's saying if the pH of the solution is lowered below the pKa of the compound, what that would mean is pH of the solution is lowered. So if it's a low pH, we have acidic conditions. This nitrogen goes and instead of being NH2, it becomes NH3, it grabs another proton. It now has a positive charge. Therefore, we have a charged species. Whenever we have a charged species, that compound is very dissolvable in water. So option D would be a much stronger, significant change to the to the compound because we're, we're saying we want the, the solubility, solubility to increase dramatically. That would be option D. If we take a non-charged compound and end up making it charged, its solubility, there's a significant drastic change in the, the solubility of it in water. So option D would be a stronger answer than option C. Option C, between an amine and an amide, there's a, a slight increase in solubility, but not nearly as much as option D. So just remember, charged species go very well in hand with a polar protic solvent like water. In question 55, it says many mainly nonpolar carboxylic acids with long alkyl chains are insoluble in water when protonated. With which of the following can they be reacted in order to become soluble? So we are talking about carboxylic acids with long alkyl, alkyl chains. They're insoluble in specifically water when they're protonated, and then we want to make them become soluble. So we are talking about like a very long chain and there is a carboxylic acid that looks like this. Because of the long chain, it's mainly hydrophobic and not really, it's not something that dissolves well in water. So to make this dissolve in water, what we want to do is, well, we want to essentially, there's an R over here, that's the entire chain. We want to essentially deprotonate this compound. So it's no longer protonated, it's deprotonated there's now a negative charge, and whenever we add a charge to a species, we increase its solubility in water. So what we need to do is to decrease, or sorry, to, yeah, so we, we need to um, decrease the amount of the protonated carboxylic acid, which means we need to increase the pKa or the pH of the solution. So the pH of the solution needs to be increased. It needs to be under more basic conditions. We need to deprotonate this acid. So option A would not be correct because you're making this compound even more, you're making the solution more acidic. So you're making more of the protonated version of the compound. So HCl would actually achieve the opposite result of what we want. NaCl would not really do anything. It's just a salt. So we'd be introducing if into, if we have like a solution of the protonated carboxylic acid and we're introducing a salt, it's not really doing anything. We're introducing something which splits up into positive and negative charges, but those positive and negative charges themselves 
don't really go and react with something. They would just kind of be counter ions. So that is not really something which would make the compound more soluble. Methanol, it is a base. However, with methanol, if you have methanol and you have kind of like acidic conditions with the carboxylic acid, a possible reaction which could occur is esterification. So we could, for example, get this compound and that's not what we want because now on the oxygen we added another methyl which would actually increase the hydrophobic the hydrophobic properties of the compound so it's if anything less soluble in water the best answer here would be NaOH which is a clear strong base we know that this base is going to release OH- which is definitely going to go and deprotonate the the carboxylic acid and give us the deprotonated form of it so NaOH is definitely going to give us a charged species and therefore it's much better than any of the other answer options. So what you want to do is use a clear strong base that you know is going to definitely increase the pH of the solution and increase the negatively charged deprotonated form of carboxylic acid and then the charged form is going to dissolve be better in water and that's something that we can react this carboxylic acid with to make it become more soluble. So D answers the question properly. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below. In that course, we go through a lot more questions like this and go through all the different answers and explain why each option is correct or incorrect so that you have the right thinking for the MCAT. And other than that, make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you keep up to date with the videos that we post here. That's it for this video. 